let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord God. Amen. Taxes are always going to be a contentious issue, dividing politicians, dividing parties, and all of us. And as we know, to pay taxes, we need money. We need coinage. Coinage is a powerful symbol for everyone, especially political parties. Our nation kept the pound, refusing to join the euro in order to keep control of its finances. Coinage also shows identity. It shows that we belong to a country. It shows our identity as well as our image of our country. The same was for the people in Jesus' time. The Roman tax coins showed you and the people that they were, were occupied by the Roman Empire. It showed how their identity had been taken away and now they were controlled by the Roman Empire. But more than this, taxation reminded the people that their land that was promised by God to their ancestors was not free, but they were living under the oppression of the foreign power, the Roman Empire. But also, taxes paid for their occupation army in Israel. For the Jewish people would have hated paying for an army and a government that occupied their country. Taxes were supporting that occupation and they were required to be paid in the Roman coin. This was a huge burden on all people, especially to have to go out and buy one of these Roman coins so that they can pay the Roman taxes. So if you wanted to embarrass Jesus, asking a question on taxes was a perfect way to catch him out. So one day the Pharisees, thinking that they have a way to catch Jesus out, they come to him with a question on taxes. Because if Jesus supports the payment of taxes to Caesar, he can be painted by the Pharisees as having sympathetic feelings to the Roman Empire, which would bring down Jesus' teaching and the people that follow Jesus would fall away. He would have been seen as being the same as tax collectors in the Jewish world. He would be seen as a collaborator. As the Pharisees said, no wonder he is friends to sinners and tax collectors. Good Jewish teachers would not have been seen with these people. But as we know, Jesus always does the opposite and shows love to all people. Where, as if he encourages them not to pay the taxes to Caesar, he can be painted as a tax rebel, a troublemaker, and someone who is inciting rebellion against the Roman Empire. And therefore he would be dealt with accordingly, meaning they could wash their hands of it all, getting rid of Jesus nicely, and therefore going back to their lives. It will see an end to Jesus, but for different reasons. As we've said, if he supports paying the taxes, it would show him as having sympathetic feelings to the Roman Empire. But if he refuses to pay the taxes, he can be seen as a troublemaker to the Roman Empire. But Jesus, being Jesus, has wisdom beyond us human beings. He can see through this question that has been asked of him and gives an answer that neither party was ever expecting. An answer I often wonder how they felt about it. Whether they went away feeling a little bit silly and a little bit sheepish. Their great plan, this wonderful question they have come up with, a way of getting rid of Jesus. And now it all comes tumbling down 
by an answer they never expected. Jesus asks them to show him a coin, the coin that is used to pay the taxes. By this, Jesus shows them they may not like the Roman occupation, but that they and everyone else has to pay their taxes. Then Jesus asks this question, whose image is on the coin? Because the coin that is used to pay the taxes bears the image of the Roman emperor. And this is the coin that is used to pay for their taxes. Then Jesus asks him this question, whose image does the coin bear? And whose inscription is on it? There's no way out for both of them. It's a very simple answer. Caesar. Caesar is the image on the coin. And also his inscription is on it. The coin belongs to Caesar. As so often we see in the gospel, Jesus not only escapes the trap, but he uses the trap to teach him something positive about what it means to be his follower. By saying to them, give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God, Jesus makes it clear that it's perfectly possible for us to fulfil our duties to God and to the secular authority so far as the law is not in conflict with the commandments of God. The image on the coin showed that the coin belonged to the Roman Empire. It had the image of Caesar on it. But we are made in the image of God. We are created in his image. We can see this in the book of Genesis. When God made us, he said, let us make man in our image. Each human being on this planet bears the image of God. But do we treat each other as if we are made by God? Do we mar that image? Do we treat each other with respect do, that we sow? Do we sow his love and care? to our human beings? Or do we mar that image? Do we, like the Pharisees with the paying of the Roman taxes, do we only sugar treat that image? Because any, anything that obscures this image, anything that degrades or lessen the respect due to every human life must concern us as Christian disciples. How do we show love and care to our human beings? Do we live out a full Christian life to all people? Or do we just sugar treat it? If we are living out our full Christian life, we will see that image of God in each and every person we see. We will see that image of God in a homeless person every child in the sweat factories, every person that is in slavery, every refugee that is trying to escape war-torn countries, famine and disease. When we have people and children going hungry, going to the food banks in this country, we will have concern about these people and our consciences will engage in each of these areas. We will ask questions, how can we help? Or how can we support these people? How can we change this for each of these people? How can we be Christ-like to each and every person in the world? So when we give food to the hungry, when we ask questions why the hungry have no food, or why we have so many refugees dying, trying to find safe homes. Why we have children working long hours in the factory. 
we are not meddling in political issues, but we are living out our Christian vocation to show our faith in action and to show Jesus' love and hope to the world. Are we sowing love and faith to all people? Are we seeing the image of God in the other? And are we giving back to God what belongs to him? Or are we just sugar treating our faith? Amen. <laughs>